let's waste no time. Today I want to show you how I created that crazy trippy tree blur effect from my short film Nature at Its Most Unnatural a week ago. This effect is inspired by the photographer Damos. He's an incredibly talented photographer, editor, artist, has some really creative, futuristic, trippy photos in his feed. His work is pretty incredible, so you should make sure to follow him. He's at Damas, D-E-M-A-S on Instagram, and there will also be a link to follow him in the description. I had seen him use this effect on many of his Instagram photos, and I wanted to see if I could pull it off in a video. And I used this short film as an opportunity to go at it, and it actually worked somehow. So today, as promised, I'm gonna show you how I pulled off this crazy tree blur effect. I'm gonna be creating this in After Effects, but you can create it almost as well, if not just as well, in Premiere Pro. All the effects are there, it's just a little easier in After Effects. Yo, just wanna briefly interrupt myself here to let you know about my YouTube channel membership. If you weren't already aware, I have a membership option on this channel where you can pay a monthly fee, either 10 or $15 a month, and get access to raw footage from my videos, extended tutorials, and a members only Discord server where I can give you feedback on your work and answer any specific questions about filmmaking and photography that you may have. In the most recent extended tutorial, I actually dive into the same tree blur effect that this video is all about, except that is a much more in-depth tutorial going through every single step in the process and talking you through every tiny little detail in real time, completely uncut. I also dive into some other effects from the same video, like the long exposure water effect and a little bit of the color grading. So if that's something you're interested in, you can find the link in the description to join that membership. And you can also just click the join button on my channel homepage. I can't thank everyone enough for the support on the membership so far. It's been really cool to build this tighter, like very involved filmmaking community and hopefully provide some value through that outlet. And I would love to see you there. But that being said, back to the video. Before we even jump into editing, it's very important that you understand that you need to choose the right footage for this effect to work properly. You can't just throw it on any shot you have on your hard drive. The effect looks good in all of these examples because the shots already have that straight vertical shape to all of the trees. Here's an example of a shot that I actually cut. I like this shot a little more than the one I replaced it with, but when I put the blur effect on it, it just looked completely whack because of this diagonal tree in the middle. It just looks weird once you put that vertical blur on a diagonal shape. So whether it's a forest or a city skyline, make sure to choose a shot that already has that straight vertical shape to it. You want the effect to complement the scene rather than going against it. You also wanna make sure your subject, the part of the frame that you don't want to have the blur effect on it, doesn't pass in front of the part that you do want to be blurred out. So here's an example of a shot I really like, but chose to cut out of the video because it just wouldn't have worked because the subject is passing directly in front of the background. So to blur out the background, I would have had to go in frame by frame and meticulously mask out the subject so he wouldn't be blurred out as well. It just would have been a total pain in the ass. So instead I chose to use this clip where I actually climbed a tree to get this higher angle of the scene and because I have that different camera angle, the subject doesn't pass directly in front of the background. So this effect was much easier on that shot. That being said, let's go ahead, crack open After Effects and show you how to create this effect. The first thing I did was hit the clip with some warp stabilizer just to smooth out the camera motion as much as possible. That's just gonna make our lives a little easier when we start keyframing the effect. First, let's add the blur effect. And this is the easy part of the process. I'm just gonna start out by adding an adjustment layer and masking out the top section of the trees, then animating the mask path so that the mask follows the camera motion. Don't worry about it being too perfect on every single frame because we're gonna be feathering this mask way out in just a moment. Next, add a Gaussian blur effect to that adjustment layer, set it to only blur vertically, and then turn that way the hell up. Then adjust the mask feather and expansion to get a nice smooth effect in the trees. And this probably looks pretty good, but you'll notice on this shot, we still have some cleaning up to do. For example, there are some areas of minor overlap where the subject is getting blurred out a little bit. And you'll also notice at the base of the trees, sometimes the blur extends 
past the ground, which just isn't realistic. So let's go in and clean that up. To make sure the blur effect stops at the base of the trees, I just duplicated my footage layer, brought it up above the adjustment layer, and then masked out the trail, then feathered that out quite a lot and keyframed it to follow the camera motion once again. Then to make sure the blur effect isn't spilling over onto our subject, I'm gonna duplicate that layer once again and then go in and roughly mask around our subject. Once again, keyframing the mask so that it follows his motion and then feathering that mask out a good bit. Then because he's wearing black and he's on a snowy background, I was able to use a Luma key to key out all of the brightest parts of that layer and clean it up even more. So we just have our subject isolated on his own layer. Finally, you'll notice that Luma key actually keyed out his face as well as the snow. So I'm gonna duplicate that layer one more time and go in and mask out the face on its own layer so that we have that also not being blurred out. All in all, this effect turned out pretty much even better than I expected. It has some really cool, kind of unique little quirks when you're working with a video rather than a photo. For example, when the trees move around, you get this beautiful like shimmery effect. And I really love how in that final shot, the headlamp just like cuts through the effect and makes these really cool beams. This is one of those effects that like doesn't have very many practical applications and you shouldn't use it often, but I think you should give it a shot just for the fun and satisfaction of creating, you know, a cool effect like this. And if you do give it a shot for yourself, make sure to send it to me, DM it to me, post it, tag me. Let me see it. I'd love to see what you come up with using the techniques in this video. All that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video, learned something new from it. If you did, feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel and following me on Instagram at Aiden Robbins. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.